Welcome to the 531, where we debate a top 5 list on a particular subject, further discuss it down to a top 3, and then eventually settle on a top 1. Now after this beat, we'll get to today's subject. That's a dedicated man right there. All right. But I'll tell you what we're, we're going to vote on instead. Right now, we're about to vote on the top five matches of the National Wrestling Alliance. And that's what I want to talk about. I thought you wanted to talk about that Joe only goes to Maine because he found out the state bird is a puffin. <laughs> <laughs> he definitely is this week, but I'm going to bring you a fan from a neighboring state. We got Jesse from New Hampshire. Mm. And he's got... The Flair versus Steamboat from the Chi Town Rumble. He's got the Tully versus Magnum. I can quit. He's got the Midnights versus the Road Warriors Castle match. He's got Dusty versus Flair, the Bash Page match. And he's got Cody versus Aldis, the first final match. AJ, are you still alive? What do you think about that? What? Match? Wow, I cannot believe he put Cody and Nick Aldis on there. I applaud him going with current NWA and it not being Zicky Dice. That's fine. <laughs> to me, the scaffold match doesn't belong there. He's got a right to his opinion, as everybody does. But sometimes your opinions are just wrong. <laughs> you know, it's funny. Me and Joe talked a little bit off air. We had to record this one again. We had some issues. And uh, I actually agree with you a little bit on that. The scaffold match is quite the spectacle, but in its premise, it is very hard to wrestle when you're hanging on a scaffold for your life, trying not to break your actual neck. <laughs> no, no, great. Yeah, like you said, great spectacle, but when it comes to actually being a wrestling match, straight garbage. <laughs> yeah, I feel like the appeal of it is really Cornette falling from the scaffold hmm. and knowing that he busted out his knees because he fell too fast for Bob and catch him like he was supposed to. Mm. Well, I think that I think that's enjoyable for anybody who's ever talked to Jim Cornette. <laughs> God damn you! <clears throat> Motherfucker! Alright, I got my boy Jake St. John here. He's got a list. He the show tomorrow night. By the time you'll listen to this, he would have been on last night's episode. Fun He's fact for you guys. <laughs> Wednesday, Wednesday night. 6 p.m. Eastern time. Mm. Check us out. Sign Check us out. Update. That's all right. We need views. <laughs> Check us out. <laughs> we got uh, Jake's list out of here. He's got the Steiners versus Hirose Hase and Masahiro Chono. He's got Funk versus Flair and I quit match. Now, some of these guys did put WCW stuff in here, but that's fine. I'm going to include it. We got Eddie Guerrero versus Benoit in their debut on Nitro for both men. Eddie Guerrero versus Rey Mysterio, Halloween Havoc 97. And Brian Pillman versus Jushin Liger, Super Brawl 92. Wow. Now, Dave, you have a definite distinction between NWA and WCW. Yes. That you were not, not a fan of WCW matches hitting this list. What is the big, like, kind of divide? line to you between the two companies i think eventually they're, they're separate promotions i think the lines got blurred as a kid i could tell you i didn't know nwa was bought out by wcw at one point because they had kind of blurred the lines and in retrospect i like to kind of go back and i like to kind of divide them up that way that's all it's just a thing me personally know that they were two different promotions even if the lineage was the same for a while yeah it didn't First. help that the wcw had that nwa belt for a little bit 
and had that kind of confusing crossover. It did. Personally, I say it's important to be understanding of our fans. <laughs> and you know what? If they don't understand the timeline, let's give them the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> Very understanding of you, sir. <laughs> Jake St. John can write a poem, but he can't write a list. Now, next on the list, I'm going to give you me, because I'm only one of three lists I got. Mm. Dave, uh, sit down for a second, because I got Flair versus Ray Starcade 83. That ain't worth a shit. <laughs> I got Tully versus Magnum, the I Quit match. That's a winner. I've got the Midnights versus the Rock and Roll, and any match they were in. I've got Cody versus Aldis, the two out of three falls match. And I've got Flair versus Vader from Clash of the Champions. I believe it's Flair versus Vader, because it's the one where they start at Flair's house, and yeah. they're sitting there talking with him, and then they get him into the limo yeah. and you're, get him to the arena. You're close. It is Vader Flair, but it's Starcade '93. Ah, shit. Either way. Yeah. <laughs> Still a good one. It is a good one. <laughs> one of my favorites. That was actually the genesis of me and AJ's friendship. So. Oh, wow. Yeah, you can bl you can blame Vader and Flair. Yeah. I included it because for me, it's one of the more memorable. And now that you divide it up, it's one of the more memorable WCW moments. But, I mean, growing up for me, WCW was kind of always NWA, whether it was Crockett Promotions, the Mid-Atlantic Championship Wrestling. Tia Turner. Kind of muddies to me. To me, that limo ride with Tony Schiavone was almost as good as the one with Cody. Oh, sure. I feel like he's trying to pop us with that one. I agree, and then I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> well, <laughs> speaking of memorable list, I got my boy Mike Flynn here. He always has a good list. Mike Flynn's got Terry Funk versus Ric Flair, I Quit Match. Ric Flair versus Ricky Steamboat, Wrestle War 89. Flair versus Barry Windham, Crockett Cup 87, I believe that was. Steamboat versus Flair, Clash of the Champions. That is the uh, Raging Cajun event in New Orleans. And Flair versus Sting, and that's the first Clash of Champions. So, solid that's list. That's a good list. No, that's a very good list by Mike Flynn. Yeah. Kid That's fucking a very brings it. Solid list. Kid fucking brings it every time. Joe, who you got left here? I was gonna say, speaking of bringing it every time, we didn't forget get him this week. The man with the plan. He's causing harm on the farm. That's Randy Osga, and he's got flavor. No fucking limits, baby, Randy. What's up? <laughs> he's got I, flair versus small guy quit match. Flair versus Steamboat Shy Town. He's got Tully versus Magnum, I quit match. He's got Piper versus Valentine, dog collar match. And he's got Sting versus Vader, Starcade 92. <clears throat> wow. What I'm, glad they, I'm glad they took the plow off him long enough. He came up with a good list. Yes. They took the plow off of Valentine and Piper too, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what's funny? What you're seeing on this list is Flair and Steamboat are making a lot of lists, but the matches are getting divided up. Whereas They do. They had so many memorable matches, unfortunately, that they're taken away from each other. Right. So, like, like that. And this next list, like I got from Scott, we'll see a similar thing here. Again, Flair versus Funk, I quit match. Magnum versus Tully, I quit match. Flair versus Steamboat, Wrestle War 89. Scott also has the first ever War Games. And Flair versus Sting from the Clash '88. So wow. we've seen about three different Flair Steamboat matches on these lists, but we've also seen a Flair Funk I Quit match pretty much on everybody's list, and it's the same match. Oh, absolutely! Yeah, I was disappointed when I saw that Scott had War Games on his list that I didn't include it because mm. I've been listening to the Laps Fan retrospective on War Games and going back and watching a few of those events. And that's got to be one of the premier NWA events of the time. One of their biggest gimmick events, I would believe. Yeah, I would say so. You know, it's funny. I, I'm just looking. I'm just going to go right to my next list here. And then AJ will get you a list in here. But I got Zach. And again, this one, I guess, is a little more of the popular one. Flair Steamboat 89 Russell War. I feel like that's popping up a little more. Flair versus Funk. I quit match. Flair and Sting versus Muda and Funk in the Thunderdome Cage. 
Oh uh, my god. Yeah, I knew that was coming. That's where Muda put out the fire with the miss, man. <laughs> He's a Japanese hero. Right, he damn right he is. Zach, Zach doesn't do many stupid things, but welcome Zach to the hey, Club. That's also where I overheard it just recently where um, Muda was climbing near the electrical fence and Jim Ross said, better be careful. He's about to be fried wonton up there. <laughs> Which is totally not oh, something God. you could say now, but back be then care, you could. Be careful mentioning that. You're going to get Jim Ross canceled. <laughs> yeah. We got the Crockett Cup 87 finals, the Road Warriors versus the Midnight Express. We Hey, AJ, has he redeemed himself yet? We got Flair versus Nikita, Starcade 86. And we also have, oh, I think I just gave you all of them, yeah. I, I forgot, I also have a list from Tim Hartford here, too. Oh, uh, put it out there. Yeah, I actually had to knock one of them out. He had the uh, alley fight between Patterson and Slaughter from 1981. That was under WWF, unfortunately, Tim. So. Yeah, that's WWE and WWF. Yes, but we do have... That's WWF if you want to get tactical. He might be right. Yeah, well, we got Flair versus Wyndham, Crockett Cup 87... Rock and Roll Express versus the Andersons, Iron and Oli, 86. And I, I believe that's Starcade. Dusty versus Flair, 86. That could be Starcade or the Bash. And we got Piper versus Valentine in a dog collar match. That is Starcade. So Piper Valentine dog collar match makes a few lists here, too. And do you think that's only because they had the recent AEW dog collar match and kind of brought that up in people's minds? I definitely was a refresher for it at seeing the dog collar, but that is one of those matches. It might, I'm a firm believer it's the best match on the original Starcade. So yeah. For me, it's always in my mind. It's definitely me. better than that Flair race match bullshit. <laughs> Gene Kaninsky tripping all over the place like a drunk. <laughs> I didn't say Gene Kaninsky made the match, but you got Flair, you got race. In the equivalent of their WrestleMania, the biggest collision of the time i to me it's just a work of art you know I what think a, i think on an election day we're better off not talking about race <laughs> as much as i love flair versus race not at stark 883 they fucked it up hard to believe two great pros did it in fact i won't blame them i'll blame it on that drunk ass referee gene kaninsky who tripped over the place the whole time <laughs> so you know this one, my first one's going to blur the timeline a little bit. This might be WCW. Uh-huh. I'm going with Sez versus Kaniski. <laughs> no, no, no. That's not true. <laughs> yeah, it was, not it was Sez versus Fritz that you wanted on your list. E- exactly. My bad. <laughs> no, my first one on the list actually was the dog collar match. I, I am a big fan of Greg Valentine and Rowdy Piper. They absolutely tore it up at the first Starcade. That match is always going to live in the minds of people. Another great one, actually, if you go back and you love pure wrestling, Dory Funk versus Jack Briscoe for uh, Dory Funk's first championship. Absolutely incredible match. I just Um, fell asleep. Hold on. (laughs) Would that have been championship wrestling from Florida? No, that was technically because it's an NWA world title match. Is technically still under the NWA banner. You got to remember all of those regional matches back then when going for the NWA title was sanctioned by the NWA. Okay. So, so, so that's definitely an NWA match. True. Another great one for me, I'm definitely, you know, I'm a huge Terry Funk fan. And his I Quit match with Ric Flair, obviously one of the great matches of all time. Flair and Steamboat, Shy town I'm a fan of the Chicago match. Hmm. And then my last one is actually the I Quit match between Tully and Magnum TA. There you go. A hell of a list. I'm surprised you went with Chicago, being that's where Steamboat actually won the belt. But it is a good Um, one. I think it was actually Steamboat winning the belt. Mm -hmm. I think that the other matches were great, too. But as much as I'm a Flair fan... I think that the best match that they had was actually Steamboat going over. And it was the defining moment of his career other than WrestleMania three. So it was kind of cool to see for Ricky. All right. My list, I got, I'm going to include Town Rumble as well. Flair Steamboat, definitely on my list. Terry Funk and Ric Flair, I quit match. Guys, in the earlier episodes of the podcast on Dave Remembers, a segment we forgot about, I talked about this match. Flair Funk, I quit match. Come on. Of course I'm going to put this on my list. Also, a little uh, fun one here for you. I think AJ and me actually talked about this, but he didn't put it on his list, so I'm going to put it on my list. Best of seven, 
with Magnum TA and Nikita Koloff. I'll take match number seven. But that whole series was just awesome. Uh, to be honest with you, Dave, that's a great pick. The only reason I ended up keeping it off was because I didn't want to have to choose between the seven matches. Yeah, that's fair. I went with, I went with number seven. I'm going to also include uh, another I Quit match in there, uh, Tully Blanchard and Magnum TA. And uh, also just to jack off somebody else's picks, Scott, the first War Games. You fucking got it, baby. I'm putting it in there too. <laughs> I thought you, I thought you were stealing Dory Funk. I'm not stealing that snooze fest. <laughs> All right, Dave. Now that we got the first round on, who did you see that showed up on the most list? I mean, the Flair Funk I quit's got to be on there. It's got to be on there. Oh, well, the problem with Flair Steam, the, I was gonna say the problem with Flair Steamboat is so many of the matches were picked, but it wasn't necessarily the same one. True. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna throw Flair Steamboat Wrestle War eighty nine in there. I feel like that one went in there a little more. I'm gonna make that decision over the dog power match. That's because we saw Flair Steamboat, but you gotta include Tully and Magnum's I quit match because that was in there plenty of times as well. So I think that's the top three we're looking at here. I'm gonna say Flair Steamboat Wrestle War eighty nine and both I quit matches. And by the way, it just, just shows you too, when an I quit match is done properly, it's one of the best matches you can do. Absolutely. So, AJ, how about this? Who would you boot off this list out of those three? Jesus. <laughs> ah, Christ. I don't want to be playing heel. Let's be the heel, bud. <laughs> I'm, get, I'm getting rid of the I quit match. Which one? <laughs> <laughs> uh, both of uh, them. Yeah, both. No, the, um, Tully and um, Magnum. Okay. Wow, why did you pick that over the Flair Funk one? Because I think Flair and Funk, the reason why it's on so many lists is because it's the, I've said this a million times, it's the originator of hardcore. Mm -hmm. Those two actually have meant so much to what wrestling has become today. And I think that that match belongs on the list. Whereas as much as I love Magnum and Tully and they did make my list, I think that that match just doesn't mean as much today as it did then. I'll tell you what. As much as I could tell, he was kind of pulling that one out there a little bit. I'm going to agree with him. I would take that one off the list, too. I would have it down to that great wrestling classic of Steamboat Flair versus the intensity of Flair and Funk. But at the end of the day, because Flair and Steamboat was watered down a little bit on this list, I don't think anything matches the intensity anyway of Flair and Funk. This is Funk at its absolute best, in my mind. And Flair is right there, too absolutely the best match of all time it takes home the gold flair steamboat wrestle war 89 is the silver and tully and magnum is the bronze and that's how i'm laying yeah. it down all right I, i've got i've got to wrap up the warden's calling me from myself all right <laughs> all right folks when you hear the music you know what it means thank you for joining us on another week of the 531 and we will talk to you again next week later